Hey there Bleepin' Jeevers, it's Tyler. A few weeks ago I did a video on five Harbor Freight tools that I thought were definitely worth the money. One of those was this 20 ton shop press. And in that video I mentioned maybe doing some things to improve the functionality and the performance of this press. I got a lot of positive reaction to that. So today I'm going to do a video on five ways that you can improve your Harbor Freight press. Um, basically to it's not going to make it any stronger, but we're going to make it a little bit more user friendly, a little bit faster, and uh, maybe a little bit more useful. So, alright, let's get to it. So my biggest beef with this uh, Harbor Freight press is this, uh, this bottle jack right here. Not because it isn't strong enough, but because it's just slow. Um, it is cumbersome to use. It's extremely slow. You can see that every pump barely gets you an eighth of an inch, if that. So it can be agonizingly slow to, to try and and press things out or get this down to where it's, it's ready to press. So the very first thing that I want to do is replace this 20 ton bottle jack with the Harbor Freight pneumatically powered 20 ton bottle jack. And that is really a lot simpler than you would think. Let me show you how to do that. Removing the old jack is extremely easy. You just pump this down And the, the jack comes with these two wing nut bolts kind of deal on either side already from the factory. And what those do is those lock this crossbar with the springs extended a little bit. If uh, you don't have these or you've lost them or they're missing or whatever, you can always just cut a length of 2x4 and shove in here. And then once you take the pressure off, then they stop their springs from ret retracting the rest of the way. I'm going to loosen this valve up as much as I can because now you have to compress this bottle jack <laughs> as far as it'll go. And then it will just slide out. There's no other attachment holding it in there. Pretty easy. So I've chosen to replace the, uh, the factory 20 ton standard bottle jack with this pneumatic 20 ton. It comes from Harbor Freight as well. Um, now these are a little bit expensive. If you watch, you can catch them on pretty good sales. This one I got for about 80 bucks, which is, I think they're normally around 100 to 120, so I got a pretty good deal on it. You gotta be a little bit patient, but if you are, you can pick them up with one of their like 25% off coupons or whatever. So we're gonna replace this with this, and as you can see, it's got a pneumatic valve on it. Back here on the back is the pneumatic motor pump to pump the jack. But before we install this, we have to get rid of this spring assembly that it comes with to retract the piston. That's, that's got to go. No big deal, but I'll show you how to remove that. So the first thing i got to do is just get these two springs off of here. Um, they are under a slight bit of compression already, but hopefully the, uh, this won't be too big of a pain. Not too bad. Now we can remove these studs because we won't be needing those. Now just make sure that this uh, the piston extension is screwed in all the way and we're already ready to stick this back in that press. Before we put this in that press 
I want to address the number two improvement that I suggest that you make to these. One of my biggest pet peeves with these jacks is having to use the handle to loosen and tighten the valve. It's just such a pain. I mean, it's it. I know that sounds like I'm whining, but the time that it takes to fish this thing out of wherever it is and then try to get it on there and sometimes you're making micro adjustments and you're going back and forth and then you got to set this down and if you're trying to hold something in the press at the same time this is this is just less than ideal so this is one of those kind of minor improvements that you can do that really improve the functionality of the press so we want to do that before we put this in because I want to be able to tip this on its back so that when I take this valve out, this plunger out, the uh, hydraulic oil doesn't leak out. So, now I had a few different ideas on how I wanted to, basically I wanted some sort of a, a dial or something larger on this where I could use just the torque from my hand to be able to loosen and tighten this and take this completely out of the equation. I've seen some guys online uh, turn, turn a knob on the lathe and drill holes in it and push this pin out and stick that pin back through the handle. Um, and I toyed with that. I do have a lathe, but I wanted to come up with a way that you guys could, could improve this. Yeah, see this is under some pressure here probably going to get a little bit of oil evacuation with this when this comes out I can hear it trying to vent maybe I better get a rag so this doesn't shoot me in the face hang on there we go okay so what this consists of as you can see there's a there's a gasket here and normally that gasket stays in the hole but this one's new enough that it's not twisted this enough but so there's kind of a kind of a bolt that's machined down to a plunger and then this plunger this needle on the end of the plunger is what opens and closes the valve. So I had a couple of ideas. I dug through my old parts and I had these which came off of an old piece of equipment. I don't remember if it was a table saw or something like that that finally crapped out and I just kept these and threw them in my parts bin. And they happen to be the right thread to do this. And so the idea I had was, hey, that would make a perfect little handle for a valve. Um, and then all I would have to do is drill a hole down in here and then create a plunger of roughly the same diameter, same length, and press it down in there. I can do all that on my lathe. Problem is, you guys don't have a lathe. Well, it's more than likely you don't have a lathe. And that is a lot of work. I think rather than do that, I would rather attack it at this end and see if I can't attach some sort of a, of a dial or something to this. And to that end, I went through a bunch of the old junk laying around here on the farm, and I found this old gate valve. And I think the handle for this gate valve is going to do nicely. As you can see, it's got a square hole in it rather than the star pattern. And I think if I press this pin out, I can make this square this up enough that it will go inside that dial and have uh, register in there pretty tightly and if I feel like it needs it then I'll just touch, I'll clean this paint and stuff off and I'll just touch the top of it with a tack weld so that it doesn't come back off and then this will become a hand wheel that I can open and close that valve with and not have to fiddle around with this stupid thing anymore. Let's see if we can make that work.
So I got that spindle welded in there. Um, this is cast steel and, and the weld cracked a little bit as it cooled. I really don't care because all it's got to do is keep that wheel from, from falling off. Now, there may be a little bit of a clearance issue with the, with the lip of the casting here. We're going to go ahead and screw it in and see if this does contact the casting, then we can clearance this with a, uh, with a grinding wheel, flapper wheel, whatever. We'll just go ahead and put it in there and see. Yeah, we are contact contacting the casting a little bit right here. So, I'm just going to mark where it needs to be clearanced. And we'll go ahead and remove a little bit of this shoe down here to clearance for this new hand wheel. Alright, we got that installed. Let's hook up the air and just see how this works. That's awesome. That is so much faster. And then once you get it down tight on whatever you're doing, then then you can use the crank to do your final push. But you can see how much faster that is, and then also how much more convenient the wheel is than uh, having to mess with this stupid thing on the bow. Really happy with that. All right, there's a couple more things we can do to improve this still, though. Third thing I want to do is, I don't like this. I don't like having these down here. I don't, they're in the way, they get knocked off, they fall off. So, what I would like to do is be able to mount them here. And to do that, I've cut just a little piece of square uh, steel tubing drilled a couple of holes in the bottom, drilled some holes in the side support of the press here and then I've got a couple rubber grommets that I've cut that I'm going to put in there as inserts and these will do two things they'll support they'll support this tubing so it doesn't crush as I as I bolt this to the frame but then they'll also deaden the sound a little bit so we're not metal on metal in there so I'm going to go ahead and mount this up just using a couple of uh, bolts and lock nuts. And now, I got a place where I can store those so they're not in the way, but they're right at hand when I need them. Alright, improvement number four that we did to this uh, shop press was to put it on casters. So it comes with this these angle iron feet for stability and all we did is took a piece of quarter inch plate steel, cut it these are some more Harbor Freight casters and we welded the plates to the to the uh, angle iron drilled them for the casters and bolted the casters on and then that allows us to move the press anywhere in the shop that we need to um, this may not be as big of a deal for you guys if you if you've got a certain place that you want the press to stay I really like having my tools mobile, um, especially the shop when it's this size. Sometimes it's 
easier to take the tool to the job than to bring the job to the tool. So, really inexpensive, and in my opinion, it was an improvement. And it was really, really easy to do. The fifth thing that I would really like to fix with this are these cross pins. So, you can adjust the height with these pins. The, the only thing I don't like about them is that they can go right on through. Um, what I'd like to do is put some sort of a stop so that when I push it on there I can just I can shove it and it'll stop. I know it won't go too far and I'll know that, it, that it's positively um, locked in place. I just think that that's just have never liked that. I would I would really like to have a, a stop there, whether uh, we weld a washer on there or maybe a, a large oversized nut. Just something so that it'll catch on the lip here and can't go on through. Let's go see what we got. Okay, so I looked around the shop for a bunch of different things that I could use to weld on this um, as a collar. I looked at uh, washers, a few other things. I couldn't find any in my junk pile that were the same size. But I do happen to have some of these great big nuts that are the same size. And they will do nicely. So what I'm going to do is just try to center that as best I can, keep it as square as I can. And I'm going to come in and weld that nut to the end of the rod. Try to keep your uh, juvenile jokes to a minimum. Let's see how they work. So I drop that in, slam it forward. It's still hot. Put it in, slam it forward. Perfect. And I always know that they're they've got the proper engagement. Super simple. like that. Alright guys, number six. 
a bonus one just because you know I like to give you guys a bonus. Credit to this one goes to another YouTuber. I wish I could remember his name so that I could give him credit for it, but kind of an annoying thing is these, these plates, these press plates, have a tendency to slip and move around and get out of alignment. So, his idea was to put some, drill some holes in the bottoms, put some pins in there so that when they sit they're kind of captured and if we do it perfectly square then it should line up perfectly any way or any orientation that we that we put these plates they should line up so uh, he had a really complicated way that he did it I I think I've got a simpler way to do it but um, let's see if we can do that so I just want to get this square with the bed of the press make sure these are more or less lined up they plasma cut these and they're an inch thick so they're not perfectly machined, they're not perfectly square so we're going to try and get them as close as we can now I'm just going to scratch, basically trace, but I'm going to scratch a line on the bottom here. And that should tell me where to put those holes. And now what I'll do is I'll measure this distance, mark it out so I have a perfect square, give myself just a little bit of leeway so that they don't fit too tight and then I'll come in and drill four holes we'll pin them and I haven't decided if we're gonna pin them with a, with a roll pin or maybe I'll thread them put a bolt in and cut the head off or maybe thread them and put all thread in them I don't know haven't decided yet but let's lay out the holes first alright I've got these set up on my cutting table just so that I can keep everything square and when I measure that scrawl line, it looks like the gap is four just over four and an eighth of an inch. So if we do four and an eighth, we should be okay. The next step is to turn them 90 degrees and establish a center line. So I've just lined up all these um, those V's scratched a center line and the reason we're going to do that is now we're going to measure out about two and a sixteenth and two and a sixteenth in both directions because we want to make sure that the pins line up in such a way that that these will line up in the center these will line up in the center and then when we turn it 90 degrees these will line up and those will line up if that makes sense it will it'll make better sense when we get it on the press but we've established that center line so now we're gonna come out to let me get my other one it'll be a little quick to see that one I've about worn out that other one so we want to come out to there's two and an eighth, uh, sixteenth, two and a sixteenth, and two and a sixteenth. That right there is going to be our whole spacing on that side. And we want to come down two and a sixteenth and two and a sixteenth off of this side. Okay, and that gives us the outer corners for where we want to put our pins. So our pins are actually going to end up just inside of those four corners. So we'll mark this one, drill the holes, and we should be good to go.
All right, I decided rather than go to the store and buy a bunch of roll pins, I have this piece of uh, round stock that I think will work nicely if I just drill a hole slightly smaller than the outside diameter of this. I can press them in and I believe they'll stay. So I've marked off eight of them. We're going to come off. Two, four, six, eight. All right, let's throw a mic on these and see what size of drill bit we need for a slight interference fit. We'll clean these up too so they'll slide in the hole easy. Alright, these mic out just at about 0 0.25, 0.253. So, which this was quarter inch round stock, so that's that, that jives, 0.253. So now we'll go look on our drill bit gauge and see what's slightly smaller than that 0.25 and hopefully we can get a good interference fit that uh, once these press in they'll stay in. So I've also got the snap on uh, drill bit gauge and this doesn't quite fit through the quarter inch hole which would jive with our calipers. So I've got a quarter inch there, the next size down is 15 64ths. And I do have a drill bit that size. I think we're going to start with the 1654 because uh, these drill bits tend to not drill a super clean hole. Uh, so we'll, let's start small, see if how tight of a fit it is. And if we need to bump it to the quarter inch, then we'll just come back and hit it with a quarter inch. I just want to make sure I don't drill the hole too big or I'm kind of screwed. So let's start there. And I only want them to go in an inch, so let me get a spacer here. And we'll check the uh, check the spacing on that. 
So this nut will give me just about the exact offset that I want. <clears throat> Man, that air, that pneumatic pump is rad. <laughs> Man, that makes this thing work so much better. Well, there you go guys that's six ways that you can improve your harbor freight shop press to make it more user friendly a lot faster to use um, in my opinion a little bit safer there might be a number seven improvement I can already tell that I need to figure out some way to mount this or to hang this you guys got any ideas post them in the comments section below but uh, I definitely I definitely want to do something different than just having this thing hanging out in the breeze. So, all right, guys. I really hope. See, <laughs> I really hope you did find this video useful. I hope it helps you improve the utility of this uh, this excellent press and makes it a little bit more useful for you. Hey, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we have literally a th over a thousand videos all related to off-road content, some tool videos like this, things that are gonna, you're going to find useful. If, you, uh, if you'd like to take a relationship to the next level, you're welcome to go to our Patreon account. That really helps us to keep content like this coming. Um, helps us a lot. Makes us independent of all the uh, weird stuff that goes on with the ad revenue on YouTube. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I'll catch you in the next video.